Of the various problems relating to extinct forms of man, none is of greater interest than that which concerns Homo neanderthalensis, wrote Dr. Arthur Keith of the Royal College of London on the 25th of July, 1918. He continued, This peculiar and extinct species of man appeared in Europe about the commencement of the Musterian cultural period, and all traces of him vanished towards the close of that period. Where he came from and where he finally disappeared, we do not know. Hence, every additional fact we can collect about him is of value. Excavations in the cave of Gar Dalam, in the southeastern corner of Malta, carried out by Dr. Giuseppe Despot, curator of the Natural History Museum of the University of Malta, working for a research committee of the British Association, has brought to light the remains of Neanderthal man in that island, thus extending the distribution of this species to another continent. For in a zoological sense, Malta is African rather than European. It is true that so far only two teeth have been found, a first upper molar and a milk molar. But those who are familiar with the characteristic form of the molar teeth of Neanderthal man will have no hesitation in assenting to the truth of Dr. Despot's discovery, Dr. Keith concluded. Dr. Keith was not a man prone to wild claims. A careful anatomist and one of the leading figures in British physical anthropology, Keith approached the Gar Dalam molar with methodical scrutiny. His assessment highlighted unusual wear patterns and thick enamel consistent with Neanderthal morphology. In particular, the root structure and robust form of the tooth bore a resemblance to known Neanderthal dental remains from European sites like Krapina and La Ferrassi. At a meeting of the Royal Anthropological Institute on March 4, 1924, the paper by Sir Arthur Keith on the discovery of Neanderthal man in Malta, with an account of the survey of the cave in which the evidence was found, Gar Dalam, by Mr. George Sinclair, was presented. The discovery was made in 1917 by Mr. Despot, curator of the Malta Natural History Museum, who, in digging a trench across the deposits on the floor of Gar Dalam, found two human teeth of a remarkable character. They lay in the second stratum of the cave, a deposit of red cave earth, which varies in depth from six to eight feet. Two teeth were found one feet and two feet deep in the red cave earth, along with the bones of pygmy hippopotamus. These bones and the teeth were in the same state of fossilization. At the same levels, and mingled with the above, were found chards of Neolithic pottery, teeth, and also other remains of Neolithic man. Men of the Neolithic period and of later dates had lived in the cave and wrought some degree of confusion in the upper levels of the cave earth. In spite of extensive excavations carried out under the auspices of the British Association, no trace of the culture of Paleolithic man has been found, neither of the Mousterian period, which is that of Neanderthal man, nor of the later Aurignacian period. All that can be assigned with certainty to Paleolithic man are the two molar teeth. Keith's report concluded. From these writings of early 20th century anthropologist Arthur Keith and the latest archaeological assessments, the debate over Malta's deep past has grown more intriguing. Stone tools, fossil teeth, and stratigraphic puzzles have all fueled a re-evaluation of how isolated this island really was during the Ice Age and who its earliest visitors may have been. Gar Dalam located near Bezabuga in southeastern Malta, has yielded a complex stratigraphy of animal bones and other signs of occupation. But one of the most fascinating finds occurred in the oldest, deepest layers, a fossilized human molar, often referred to as the Gar Dalam tooth. This single tooth, collected more than a century ago, was thought by Arthur Keith, then one of Britain's foremost anatomists, to resemble those of Neanderthals. But Dr. Keith's analysis came at an awkward time. The academic world was still sorting through the implications of Darwinian evolution, and the taxonomy of early humans was hotly contested. When newer finds, including modern human remains associated with Malta's later temple builders, were unearthed, Keith's single molar seemed too ambiguous, too isolated, and too potentially controversial to shift the dominant view. Now, experts from the London Natural History Museum have revived the theory that the tooth could prove Neanderthals once roamed the island. The British anthropologist proposed the theory in the 1920s, but it lost credibility four decades later, when Neanderthals were dismissed as simple-minded brutes by the out-of-Africa theorists. 
International experts have recently identified exclusively Neanderthal features in at least one molar discovered during the 1917 dig in Gar Dalam. Neanderthals are our closest extinct human relatives, dating back 300,000 years. They have a distinct receding forehead and prominent brow. Researchers discovered features on the surfaces of the molars by inspecting their grooves and edges, including a specific cusp that formed a type of dental fingerprint. The experts say this is undeniably Neanderthal. So could Neanderthals have once walked the sun-drenched cliffs of Malta long before the island's first known civilizations arose? This Mediterranean outpost, famous for its megalithic temples and enigmatic cart ruts, may hold secrets far older than anyone had imagined. Recent work has revisited long-neglected archaeological evidence that might suggest a Neanderthal presence on Malta tens of thousands of years ago, and highlighted discoveries made in Gard Dalam, the so-called Cave of Darkness, where stone tools and fossil remains, once studied and then dismissed, could point to a story that predates Homo sapiens' known arrival on the island. The mystery centers on whether Malta was ever connected to mainland Europe or Africa during the Pleistocene. If so, Neanderthals could have reached the island during periods of lowered sea levels. Although mainstream scholars often view Malta's geography as too isolated to allow Neanderthal colonization, some have questioned whether that assumption truly fits the evidence. Could land bridges or easier crossings have existed during glacial periods? Could Neanderthals, like modern humans, have had the cognitive and technological means to reach islands like Malta? Recently, Maltese researchers re-examined the Gar Dalam material using updated techniques. Although no new Neanderthal bones have been discovered in Malta, scholars have begun to question the earlier consensus that the island was entirely devoid of Pleistocene hominin activity. The molar was again studied, this time using comparative morphology and digital imaging. While still inconclusive, owing in part to the loss of contextual stratigraphy and the incomplete nature of the fossil, the tooth displayed enough archaic features to keep the debate alive. Some argued that the wear and enamel thickness could just as easily come from robust modern humans. Others noted that the combination of features aligned more closely with Neanderthals than with anatomically modern Homo sapiens. One of the most pressing issues was the stratigraphic context. When the tooth was originally excavated, it came from deep within the hippopotamus layer, named for the pygmy hippopotamus bones that were common in the same stratum. This suggests a very ancient date, possibly beyond 30,000 years ago during the Pleistocene. If the molar truly came from that layer, it would precede the Neolithic and even upper Paleolithic human activity traditionally attributed to Malta. Even more tantalizing is the evidence of stone tools discovered in and near the Gar Dalam cave. These tools, generally crude in form and typology, resemble Mousterian artifacts associated with Neanderthals in mainland Europe. The tools include flakes, scrapers and cores, basic implements used for cutting and shaping animal hides, meat and plant materials. The tools, like the tooth, were long ignored or miscategorized. Some were labeled as geofacts, naturally broken rocks, while others were considered to be from later periods and thus irrelevant to the Neanderthal debate. But as interest in re-examining Malta's deeper history grew, a small number of archaeologists began to revisit the lithic collection with fresh eyes. A 2016 reassessment noted the resemblance between the Malta tools and those from early Middle Paleolithic sites in Sicily and southern Italy. This raised an uncomfortable possibility that Neanderthals had in fact colonized or at least visited Malta during glacial periods when sea levels were low and distances to nearby land masses were smaller. The possibility of short sea crossings, perhaps aided by primitive rafts or driftwood, suddenly seemed less far-fetched. Much of the debate hinges on geography. Today, Malta is a small rocky archipelago located about 90 kilometers south of Sicily. But during the Ice Age, global sea levels were much lower, by as much as 120 meters. Paleogeographic reconstructions show that large parts of the Mediterranean basin were transformed, exposing land bridges and reducing the distances between islands. Some models suggest that at glacial maximum, Malta may have been part of a larger landmass, or at least significantly closer to the Sicilian coast. 
If Neanderthals could cross from mainland Italy to Sicily, as recent evidence suggests they did, then a further hop to Malta may not have been insurmountable. Furthermore, Neanderthals are increasingly being recognized as more capable than previously thought. Evidence from Gibraltar, Crete, and even the Channel Islands suggests that Neanderthals may have undertaken short sea journeys. If so, then their presence on Malta is not outside the realm of possibility. Rather, it would fit into a growing pattern of underestimated Neanderthal adaptability. This idea challenges older stereotypes of Neanderthals as purely land-bound, cold-adapted mammoth hunters. In fact, evidence from sites in southern Europe shows that Neanderthals fished, collected shellfish, and may have used fire to cook their meals. They made symbolic objects, buried their dead, and crafted specialized tools. There is even limited but growing evidence of Neanderthal seafaring, or at least coastal exploration. In this broader context, the Malta finds appear less anomalous. If Neanderthals reached islands like Crete, where lithic evidence has recently been interpreted as pre-modern human, then Malta, with its exposed Pleistocene geography, would have been well within range. Adding to the mystery is the faunal composition of the Gardalam layers. Alongside the human molar and stone tools, paleontologists uncovered a remarkable array of Ice Age fauna, including pygmy elephants, deer, and the aforementioned hippopotamuses. These animals suggest a once richer environment capable of supporting large terrestrial mammals, possibly introduced through land connections or extreme environmental conditions. The presence of such fauna indirectly supports the idea that Malta was at times connected or at least more accessible from the mainland. If elephants and hippos could reach the island, then so could hominins, particularly those as adaptable as Neanderthals. Keith's 1911 study did not conclusively label the tooth as Neanderthal, but he emphasized its distinctiveness and similarity to other archaic human remains from Europe. For decades, the tooth lay in relative obscurity, dismissed or simply forgotten by a field increasingly focused on other finds. Malta's prehistory seemed to begin with the arrival of Neolithic farming communities around 5200 BCE, leaving little room for wilder speculations about earlier hominins. Yet that tooth never quite disappeared from the conversation, and in recent years it has come back into focus. Nevertheless, in hindsight, Keith's observations remain striking, especially given what modern paleoanthropologists now know about Neanderthal dental morphology. If the Neanderthal hypothesis proves correct, it would radically rewrite the prehistory of Malta. Instead of a quiet, uninhabited rock until the Neolithic, Malta would become part of the broader map of early human dispersals across Europe and the Mediterranean. It would suggest that Neanderthals explored, perhaps even settled, Mediterranean islands long before the rise of agriculture. Such a scenario also forces a reconsideration of how early humans, Neanderthal or otherwise, adapted to island environments. Were there extinctions, hybridizations or cultural contacts that have since vanished without a trace? Could the enigmatic temple people of Malta, with their unusual skull morphology and artistic expressions, have inherited echoes of a much deeper past? The tale of the Neanderthals in Malta is far from resolved. It remains a shadowy hypothesis, lingering on the margins of accepted prehistory. But thanks to the meticulous early work of Arthur Keith and new archaeological assessments, the question is being asked again, and perhaps with more seriousness than ever before. More detailed excavations, better dating techniques, and renewed attention to old collections may yet yield answers. Until then, the ancient shadows in Gar Dalam still whisper of a forgotten chapter, one in which Neanderthals may have stood on Malta's shores, watching the waves crash beneath a Pleistocene sky. Thanks for watching and commenting. Please subscribe the channel for updates.